Okay, hello and welcome to rendering class number two. We learned how to kind of look at our objects in terms of uh, visualizing them in a three-dimensional space. Now, rubber stamping for the most part is a two-dimensional type of activity. We're stamping objects on or designs onto a flat piece of paper. A lot of people use um, three-dimensional types of effects with pop-up dots, etc. I've been doing um, mirror cards lately, which kind of are a two-dimensional type of application, but looks, you know, a three-dimensional uh, with, with three-dimensional looking results um, with a fold. But for the most part, we are doing flat types of applications of both the imagery and our media that we're applying to these cards. Okay, now some of us might get a little bit thicker with things like puffy paints or something like that for snow scenes. Um, you know, very, very um, shallow types of three-dimensional things by putting on stickers or something like that. Okay, but for the most part, we're talking about a two-dimensional um, type of uh, product. Okay, or end result. Okay, so in this one, we. Uh, in the first class, we went into um, how to see things like a covered bridge as a three-dimensional object, um, turning something in space, making it look more three-dimensional by not applying a uniform application of color, values, etc. over the entire span, but seeing, in this case, three different sides of the covered bridge as being hit by three different types of light. Now on this one here, we do a red bridge right here, but on this one, the application of colors, um, it's, it's kind of approaching the bridge as if all three sides were painted or just have the same type of uh, treatment in the actual object. You can see right here, there's a different type of shading on the front of the bridge. The second side has a little bit more of a shadow, but it varies also within that side. And then the rooftop is a little bit lighter because of top lighting, okay? Following suit, the tops of these little areas on, of the tree are a little bit lighter than the darker areas, okay? And what I want to do in this video is go into um, skies. How do you do skies, you know, that might represent, I don't know, whatever, hundreds of thousands, uh, you know, thousands, uh, millions of miles of distance in be, you know, between um, certain objects and other objects within that space, okay? So we'll do that. But looking at this right here, going back into the rendering portion, seeing a flat design, this is the larger version of the Aspens here, and seeing it as more of a three-dimensional object and how to render it as such. Okay. So let's get into some sky imagery. I do have a lot of other videos on sky imagery, but it's kind of more from the aspect of how to blend them together and how to unify them with land images. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to see these as three-dimensional objects or really deep space. Uh, in terms of a Milky Way, there might be a star that's separated in distance from another star by, like I said, hundreds of thousands of miles, millions of miles maybe, in fact. Okay, and then we'll do some more shallow types of applications with, you know, a moon. In relation to that, it's a fairly small span of space. What are we talking about? 230,000 miles-ish from Earth or something like that. And then you have these clouds that are, I don't know, whatever, five miles from us or something like that. Three miles, I don't know, whatever that would be. Okay, and just some cloud textures like this. How do we bring space into this cloud texture just in kind of a high noon type of application? All right, so I'm just going to be using some dye-based inks on this, and we'll also get into um, one of the things that I like to use a lot is some bleed-proof white when it comes to um, some stars, as long as my toothbrush is dry, uh, clean, yeah. And let's see, what I'll be using is some uh, just some semi-gloss cardstock here. Glossy cardstock would work really fantastic for 
sky imagery in terms of getting us a real vivid type of um, application of, uh, of dye-based inks. It looks really fantastic on glossy. Some of you can't find glossy. Semi-gloss is pretty easy to find, though. You can probably find it even on Amazon. All right. This is, again, it's cardstock. It's not photo paper, okay? You can do these types of things on photo paper, but just for simplicity in terms of talking about the concept of rendering, let's just stick with a uniform um, application of uh, media on surface. Okay, let's go ahead here. Okay, so let's start off with, um, let's start off with this cloud with moon right here, okay? Um, with this type of scenario, I generally go with uh, oh, just some blue tones, you know, in a nighttime sky. You can stamp it in black if you want to as well. Something kind of in the darker scheme, okay? Um, I mean, you can stamp it very lightly if you want, but let's go with, oh, kind of a medium to darker tone and the reason for that the reason why I'm not stamping this image in like say a light blue is because if I'm gonna blend in some other types of tones into it if you stamp it really super light to begin with then you would be eradicating a lot of the imagery with those first few colors that you uh, you know you sponge into the uh, the stamped image okay so that being said Oh, uh, let's go with, I like my Marvy ones on this one, but let's just go with the Memento. A lot of you don't have Marvies. So a dark blue. You don't have to go with the Danube me Memento blue either. You know, use whatever you have, okay? Kind of like a navy tone, okay? Navy blue or darker. If you have, uh, I don't know, royal blue, kind of more of a medium blue, that's fine too. You know, like a... You know, this one happens to be a number 10 blue, the Bahama blue memento. Like I said, whatever color, whatever line of inks you have, what chances are you probably have some sort of um, darker blue um, color on hand. Okay, so let's stamp this out. Large stamps get plenty of pressure, but this goes for any type of image that you are stamping in dark blue. It could be the Milky Way that I'm using or something like that, okay? Could be just some clouds that you're using. All right. Now, one of the things with um, sky imagery, when I teach my classes, what I do is after they ink up like that, I have them kind of wipe off the perimeter like this, okay? So that it stamps out without too much of a border, a hard border. On this one, I gave most of my pressure on the interior. I know not to rock it to get um, really super dark edges, you know, like. I don't know, well, that one's stamped out, but um, you don't want these to look like rectangles. Let me see if I have my cloud cumulus handy. This isn't a uh, cloud cumulus class, but, um, oh, I don't see it anywhere. But you can put in some surrounding clouds around this if you want to. But let's just keep things really simple here, okay? All right, so this these clouds here are supposed to represent um, clouds in our atmosphere and we're looking back into space like I said a couple hundred thousand miles away and we want to push and pull distance in here okay now you can see the light there's darker areas on the design okay see these little areas some of them are a little bit more distinct okay and some of them are lighter down here okay now I'm going to follow suit with my application of colors that I apply on the top of this. Now here's one of the things that I talk about a lot in my live streams and such, but at one point in time I discovered um, re-inkers, okay? Uh, when ink pads first came out, um, quite often they didn't come with a, an optional re-inker fluid, okay? And I don't know, when those did arrive on the scene, it really answered a lot of um, issues for me in terms of the addition of color, sponging on colors to color more fully a complete scene, okay? So, okay, so in rendering again, uh, if you watch my first video, you see where I line things up going from light to dark, okay? Uh, no matter what color scheme you're working in, 
Okay, so let's do this too. Let's bring in some highlighting types of pens here as well. I'm going in with some paint pens here. I used to only use white, but now these days they have sets of multicolor pens like these Artistro pens, and I can um, line things up going from light to dark like this, okay? Um, but going back to um, re-inkers, all right, let's see here. Here's a memento range of tones going from light to dark like this, okay? I'm not going to talk about it too much in this video, but um, I talked about that previously on, on uh, rendering part one, but this represents a range of values within a given color scheme, okay? Now, I'm not going to go with all kinds of different colors in here, okay? It's going to be blue tones. So we have a range going from light to dark like that, but I have the re-inker for this summer sky right here, so I'm going to leave that out because I'm going to get the most amount of coverage with that. In part one of this rendering uh, little mini-series, I talk about coverage, and when you go with your lightest of tones within um, a given composition, you start off with a pretty good coverage of your lighter tones. When you move into the medium and darker tones, you become more selective that way. Okay, so you can take whatever you want. You can take uh, whatever you're using, kitchen sponges, uh, you know, makeup wedges, whatever, and to color this on, okay? Rendering isn't necessarily about um, the applicator, okay? It's about the choices you make with the um, where you apply your medium. Now, some, you know, media is going to be a lot uh, more specific in terms of like a colored pencil being used on here. It's a it's a detailed type of um, tool, you know, with a pointed little lead, you know, applicator, whatever, wax. Um, something like this right here is going to be more for general areas, okay? You can get a little bit more detailed if you kind of, you know, make an area that's kind of more narrow like that to color in a specific area. But going back to our value range, okay, we're going to get a pretty good amount of coverage with this. But on something like clouds, you can see where there's lighter areas and darker areas, okay? But just to keep things simple, what I see it as is lighter in the middle, and it gets a little bit darker the farther you get away from our light source. This one has a very definitive light source in the moon. So you can go with some of these tones like this, and I'll start it with darker tones away from my light source. That way, when I start applying it on here, this starts getting drier and drier, right? So as it gets drier, I will move this towards my moon and use a lighter touch too. So see this, we have this little transitioning area from a light blue to an even lighter blue, okay? This isn't going to be a dark blue no matter how much I apply there. I can achieve, you know, full saturation of this color by putting in a pretty good amount of it down here. Now, what do you do for this area right here? Well, I apply it from the outside edge in this way, kind of in this little streaky action like this. So instead of just coloring this scene, I'm also kind of, or filling in the perimeter area, you can say. What I'm doing is I'm kind of rendering my clouds a little bit, just from the fact that I didn't cover all of them up uniformly, okay? Now I have these other, um, blue tones to go, so those become a little bit more perimeter oriented as I work on here, okay? So see this right in here where there's a little bit of light on these clouds? If I like that, I can just leave it as is, okay? If you want to get a little bit of color in there, if it's a little bit too white, then go ahead, or you can even put some of this tone over the top of the moon so it's not so stark white, okay? But look at this, I'm doing this with a pretty dry applicator at this point in time because I've applied all of this ink around here. This is a semi-gloss, so it's really absorbing my ink really quickly, okay? So that is that right there. It makes pretty fast work when you use that re-inker, doesn't it? Okay, so you just use your same applicator, sponge, whatever you're using, makeup, wedges, um, 
ink brush markers, whatever. Let's go to our next tone. We're working progressively through our values. This one's the Memento Bahama Blue here. What do you do on this one? You do the same thing that you did the previous color, okay? I'm starting on the outside edge. I'm working my way in. I don't have as much ink on this as I did with my previous tone. Oh, by the way, when you go in here, don't press too hard. People say they're getting a lot of shredding on the edge right here. Well, you're just kind of touching this like this. You're not pressing into it. Don't use any pressure with this, okay? Let the applicator do the work. I mean, it gets a little bit shredded, you know, inevitably, because I'm starting halfway off the paper and halfway on, but you just touch it like this, and then you just kind of drag on. So I'm using like no pressure here. Then as I move in here, I might start using a touch of pressure, but it's no more than doing this, okay? And you get your application of color with repetition over pressure, okay? So see this right now, what we're doing is we're kind of uh, um, enhancing our lighting in here. See, there's some shredding occurring. Get a little bit of that shredded paper towel like that. I like using the paper towels these days because I just know that you can find these anywhere in the world, okay? Sometimes if you use like a specific, like I used to use the stylus tools, those were the best applicators of all time, in my opinion. Do the ergonomics, the absorbing um, sponge factor of them, but a lot of people just, you know, they associate the delivery system with the whole technique. It has to be a stylus tool to get, you know, to do this, but it doesn't, you know, you can use, you can use an old t-shirt or something like that as your applicator. I keep saying this, but I think um, fabric, like an old cotton t-shirt, would be maybe the best applicator of all time. On something like that, you get to, you have to wash it off, you know, after you're done, though, you know, if you want to use it for other colors, but this works just fine. Okay, so see that right there? So now what we're doing is we're kind of pushing and pulling a little bit um, in here. A lot of times the darker you go, it represents something a little bit closer. Not necessarily when it comes to skies, but it kind of looks that way. It looks like this hole kind of back into that. You can put a little bit of warm tone. A lot of times people like to give their moons a little bit of warmth with a little bit of a, a tinge of a tone. Don't go with yellow or something like a canary yellow. It would have to be a really dull kind of warm tone, like a, like a tan or something like that. Maybe a blotted off version that you use in there. You can go with the, you know, if you have a super um, light uh, alcohol pen, maybe that's the perfect thing for that. You know, you can just go right in here and add a little tinge like this into your areas that you've retained the white. But with certain alcohol pens, they are so light that you can just apply them really freely over an area that you think you might want to use it, but you're not quite sure. It's just such a a small kind of a commitment to that, in this case, temperature like that. But I don't know if you can see that. See the difference between white and that area in there? It's a little bit of this. This is uh, beige. Okay, here's a darker tone. This is the color that we stamped out our imagery in, okay? So we're going with this and adding it in like so. I usually don't use colored pencils and like the sky imagery, but I'll, I'll do that. I'll just show you how that would look in here for the sake of rendering, okay? We'll bring this in and I like to do kind of a vignette type of look in my scene. So I'm really concentrating this in the corners especially. And see this, how I'm dragging this in like that. I get that transition of light and dark. A lot of times people, when they're using a really great technique, but when they get to the darker tones like this, what they do is they go like this, and then they just kind of stay there, or it's like this really nice tone, but then they go with black and it's like that, <laughs> you know, where they kind of forget about that kind of light to dark type of application in there. So see, so you just kind of drag that back in there and transition it. I went real heavy like that to, you know, to make a point like that, but just kind of use that same motion. Don't just change it all of a sudden. And here's the thing. when you, If you get to black or something like that, 
and if you put it on there, if, you, if you're keeping your black pad super juicy all the time, sometimes people don't want to go like this because it's this big, thick slathering of black ink all the way across there. So they kind of stay out there and they don't move it a little bit more. Just blot it off a lot before you take it on there so you're not using a full saturation of a super juicy applicator, you know, but you're using more of a dry one. That way you have control over it. All right, but see this right here? Okay, now I'm going to vary this a little bit. Okay, so here's a little bit of a darker tone. I'll we'll leave a little bit of a lighter one in there. You know, you can do this kind of drag type of mark like this. I'm going across here. And again, it's to create this kind of variation happening within the space. We have lighter tones in there with the um, cloud structures in the background. Let's take a look at some colored pencils here, okay? Um, here's some blue tones like this, lighter blue, medium blue, darker blue. Eh, it's, uh, maybe it's more of a medium-ish light to medium dark or something like that to dark. It's because on the, you know, with colored pencils, you can also go with a pretty light version of even the darkest of colors. Black, you can get, you know, five you know, percent gray out of it. You know, you don't have to use it like this all the time, right? So, but just in keeping with that kind of progressive type of uh, range of tones, okay, from your inks, media, in this case, pencils, chalks, and whatever. Okay, now, do you see these areas in these clouds that are darker than others, right? There's a little bit of a defining kind of tone or line in here. Well, it's not really lines, but it's tone. So what, one of the things I can do is I can just kind of reiterate those darker areas, okay? I should use colored pencils when I'm using um, kind of the semi-gloss papers in my sky. This, this really gets uh, kind of that looking pretty good in there. Now I'm just doing this very lightly at first too, okay? So I'm just adding this where those darker areas are, okay? And I'm transitioning them a little bit. I'm not doing just like this like that, right? I'm going to go in more like this, and then I'm adding kind of a lighter version of it like that. So here's a darker area right in here, adding a little bit darker at the base of it, then kind of transitioning it so that goes from darker to lighter up top like that. All right, let's do it in this area right in here. And again, I'm not making it up. I just, I, I can see areas where there's tone in the design itself, okay? So it goes from dark to light up here, and there's dark to light up there, okay? Darker here, lighter up here, okay? So let's see where this one is. So that's area, when it's stamped out in black, it's easier to see. I stamped this one out in light, uh, darker, you know, dark blue, but I can still see this area in here. And we're transitioning in that like so, okay? From up here, it's the opposite because this area is being bottom lit, these clouds are being top lit, so see this right in here? I'm adding this tone like that and then transitioning it a little bit this way, okay? Down here and here up here, I'll transition it this way. I'll put a lot more of this color up here and as I move down, it dissipates a little bit. So here it is up here and transition down and done, okay? That's all it really takes like that. Now, I, you probably can't really see very much of what's happening because I'm doing a very light color over an area that's roughly the same value as this one. But let's move to the darker tone right now. Here, okay? Starting in the darker areas, okay? Use a light touch at first, you know, so you can get a feel of how this color is affecting the overall look of that object or area, you know, in space. Not outer space, I'm talking about, uh, you know, the space on your car, the distance, okay? So this one right here, you can see it much more visibly. You don't have to do this over everything either, okay? Those are just kind of little suggestions um, areas within the designs, okay. All right. 
Let's do something like that. See those areas in there? Look at that. Those transitioning tones. Look at the uh, the um, the variations in here. It suddenly we're separating these clouds by distance a lot more now, right? So we're again we're giving the area depth instead of it being a covered bridge that has depth. Now we're giving kind of um, sky um, some distance in there. Okay. All right, that is that, and here's an even darker one, okay? But again, it just, it's relative to how much pressure you use on this. But yeah, just in general, the more colors you use, the potentially, the richer a surface can become. You know, it might become too kind of filled, you know, it, if you just put on a ton of it everywhere, okay? But again, I'm just using the design as my guide in general, okay? Yeah, I might be adding this in other areas a little bit or transitioning it. You don't have to go like this and go, oh my God, I there weren't any dots there on the design and I just put them in this dark blue. It's not like that, you know? The, those areas in there are just kind of areas that you can kind of use as your guide, but then, you know, you can go off on your own too. All right, so there is a little bit more distance and everything in there. We have a lot of um, space within the design and let's go on let's see I don't know if you can see this but let's see if we, now I would go darker on this but just in general that's my moon right there okay now on the highlighted areas okay you can see in here there's lighter areas within the design like right around here I've left that light because the moon is there these clouds are being top lit because the moon is above them, right? Okay. And this is light down here, but that's more of a transition zone. Okay, but what I can do, <laughs> I have a lot of uh, colored ink that I absorbed or got into my tip here from yesterday's video. Let me get that cleared out if I can. Let's see. There we go. You just get these things flowing again and they're good to go. Okay. So again, following suit with the highlighted areas like this. Now, if this was a lot darker blue, you can tell, um, you know, where I'm adding this a little bit more. But now, if I'm going white on white, you're not going to be able to see it too much or at all, but I usually start in those very light areas where you can't see it, and then I just kind of transition it a little bit in these darker areas. The darker it gets, the fewer dots that I put down. You can do a little line work here too, or something like that. Now I'm, I'm spending a lot more time on this cloud than I normally would, or on this cloud with moon. Usually it's a background stamp for other things in the foreground, trees, meadows, whatever, waterfalls, whatever you want to do it. You can do it with the, uh, the covered bridge. Maybe I'll do that as a final piece. You know, I'll combine um, the covered bridge that I used in that composition with a sky image, and we'll talk about the rendering and how to utilize these different types of techniques and strategies in a really finished scene. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's see. Okay, this one's being bottom lit. I'll add, just for the sake of this, I'll add uh, some bottom lit clouds up here. Okay, so hopefully you can see a little bit of that, what's going on in here. See that little cloud has that illuminated area. And these ones in here, I don't know, it's a little bit less visible. You can see a little bit down here. Let me put a little bit more here just to make it more visible for you. But these look like rounded forms now, don't they? The way that there are varied amounts of ink that apply down our colored pencils or whatever. And then we go and follow suit with a little bit of a kind of opacity with these colored dots on there.
in this case, it's just white, you know, because of the, uh, the light is kind of white. I put a little of that um, beige tinge in there so it's a little bit warmer. You can apply more of it on there if you want to, but anyways, that is our moon right there. We have some deep space and following suit by just following my light and shade type of uh, strategies within the black and white pen and ink design. All right, but that is something that obviously represents something a lot more distant than the clouds, right? But what do you do with something like, I won't do both the Milky Way and the, uh, and the uh, star birth right here, but uh, these would be kind of the same in terms of uh, visual distance in here. Let's go with this one right here. This one right here has some lights and darks within there. So, you know, you would know where you can apply. And then I have some streaks in here a little bit like that and some brighter stars. But this one right here is a little bit more, you know, there's question, you know what I mean? This, here's this whole uniform area of tone, okay? So how do you bring in some distance into something like this. Okay, let's take this. All right, now one of the things that I like to do on these, uh, the Smoky Way, is I like to get a varied impression, all right? That kind of introduces um, distance into the actual stamp. I'll do it two ways, I'll just stamp it out kind of monochromatically, and then, looks like this stamp I didn't clean off. I might have to clean it off. We might be using Starbirth after all. <laughs> I've been using some of these um, pads I've been using uh, stays on, so I've been slowly cleaning off my stamps. I had a cleaning session yesterday, in fact. Okay, so Milky Way, let's get this stamped out right here. This one looks oh, really great on uh, glossy cardstock again, but we're going with a flatter type of... Uh, Look with the semi gloss, which is kind of close to matte cardstock, okay? But let's fill this one in. I have whole videos on how to use this uh, Milky Way. Okay, now see where this kind of can link up with that, like that? I'm overlapping by, like, a, I don't know, almost like a quarter inch to an inch in here. I'm changing the angle. I'm not trying to stack this up like bricks, okay? Edge to edge. You kind of come in there, so the previous impression is going like like a right about here okay so just overlap it adequately stamp it out and you don't have these big huge kind of you know areas that look like bricks in the sky okay now watch this you can i'm going to show you how you can do this pretty extreme now again when you stamp this out don't rock it like this you know where you're getting the edges that are really definitive see how that just kind of tapers off like that i've drawn that into design like that but if you rock this like this then you know you might get some harsher edges now on this one right here these images are going see that image right there is going in there like that i mean don't overlap it by four inches or something like that but uh, you can overlap it by quite a bit I don't always just kind of follow that, you know, this line like that. Now, if you're just using the bare rubber, you're not going to have this uh, indexing like that. But maybe what you do on the back of your rubber, a uh, bare piece of rubber like a die, you see this area right in here where it's that Milky Way? I would, on the back of my bare rubber, you know, I don't, I don't have a piece right here, but on the back of this, put a line going like this, you know, with a ballpoint pen or something like that, so you can see where the Milky Way is, and you can always kind of just line it up. Like on my Cloud Cumulus, someone gave me the idea to, what they did was on the back of their cling or bare rubber, they put an arrow pointing up, okay, or the direction of the, uh, the cloud, okay. Speaking of that, the Cloud Cumulus looks really great in here, but I just want to do this just to make a point on the rendering portion of it. This one's going to go really fast too, folks. Okay. Because there's not all these different areas in there like the cloud was used. Okay, so we have that right there. And again, I'll show you what this looks like um, stamped out with a little bit more variation in the impression. Let's, let's do that right now, as a matter of fact. Okay, so let's take this. 
And what I'm doing is I'm inking it up, okay? Now, a lot of you don't have these types of pens, but if you do, they work out really fantastic. This gives you that watercolory type of looking impression and the watercolory look will have some variations going from lights to darks or even a hue change like this, if I can get this. I just re-inked some of my pens or a lot of them. Watch that video if you have any of these pens. Okay, so I'm going in and I'm blending in some of this pink into my blue, okay? This is the Marvy 1500 series. This is the number nine pink here. Now I'm kind of removing some of that darker blue too. You know, that's a pretty dark blue that I was utilizing there. Let's just go with two colors like that. I can, I can bring in some of this lighter blue as well, but let's go with this one right here. Let's go very centralized. If I had, you know, a meadow down here or something like that, then I would stamp it higher, okay? I'm just doing just all skies here just to keep things nice and simple, okay? But you would utilize this type of coloring scheme if you had and you know another area that you wanted to fill in okay so see that a little bit more variation in the impression itself you can see where i've used that super juicy um um uh, pink marker there huh maybe i should have used it more and spread it out a little bit more okay now this one right here i've added um some of that blue back in this little area let's go for a little bit more variation let me just go with the pink on the rest of it here like so, okay, and let's go. Got a little bit of a marker or felt there with that. Let's go with this one right here. Okay, so it's got like purples and blues and like that. Let me just go with pinks now. Let's use some of this residual ink that's already on here. Okay, let's really fill this area in, like about like so. That ink goes a long way, doesn't it? In terms of uh, having that blue. See, I'm stamping it out in pink right here, but there's it's still mixing with a lot of that blue in there. Let's see, let's go like this. becoming more pink oriented there. Doesn't it already kind of look like it from a spatial sense? Um, there's different distances in there because we have different values running throughout, okay? All right, that is that. And again, that is the Milky Way large there. Okay, so let's take a look at these two pieces here. And let's start coloring them in. Now, um, we can go with the same um, blue tones like that, but let's throw in something into the mix. Let's bring in um, a pink here. Oh, let's use this pink right here. This is the same pink as this color right here. This is the number nine pink, okay? I just don't happen to have other pinks in other brands like Memento or something like that that I can use. Let's go back to our applicator here. Just fold it out and use a different part of it. Let me let me use a different applicator here. A lot of, you know, some of you don't like using uh, paper towels, you know, or something like that. You know, paper towels get enough time in the kitchen, you know, mopping up uh, the floor or something like that. Here's a kitchen sponge though, okay? All right, now how do you look at this image, okay? Well, there are lighter areas here, obviously, with this Milky Way here. And there's just different areas in here, but there's nothing really definitive in there. There's not like a, a structure in here, like a building or something like that. There's just different stars, okay? So for the most part, I usually leave my lighter areas a little bit lighter. I might cover them up though. You can, you know, it, you can do it in many different ways. But what you want in terms of these surfaces here is you want a decent amount of variation going from light to dark and um, 
maybe uh, like different, I don't know, whatever, different colors or whatever in here, variations of color. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about right this. So in other words, the basic thing about this whole rendering thing is don't just color everything up uniformly, okay? I mean, you could do that, but there's less variation and less depth that way. So this is more rendering like this. So you just, on this one right here, I just have to make some decisions. I'm gonna go with this dominant area right here. And this one, I'll leave those ones as my lighter areas, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stay away from them with color. I might apply some of my lighter kind of base layer colors in there, but then when I come in with the darker tones, um, there'll be less um, coverage, okay? But again, I like a little bit of a vignette with this, so let's go in like this. And let's go around the edges like that, okay? But let's bring in a little bit of this tone in here just so it's not completely anemic within that space. But there you go. I mean, it's really, really simple with something like this because that sky just took up the whole area. But see, there's areas in here that are a little bit lighter and, you know, darker. There's a lighter area right there, but I came in underneath it and went a little bit darker. So there's this kind of oscillation of ink that's been applied, meaning there's certain areas that are darker and certain areas that are lighter. On this one right here, I'm mixing in, but I am blending in some of that ink in here because, you know, that pink was super juicy just because I just re-inked it, okay? This one is kind of, it's kind of uneven because that first impression was so dark, but we'll just show you how to integrate that, okay? All right, so we have that. Now let's go to let's go to our next tone of blue. So I used again, it's the memento summer sky right there. And we'll go with the Bahama blue because it's the next darker value. And again, just like on anything, you become a little bit more selective with your application the darker you go, okay? So here's the Bahama blue. And I'm using the same sponge that I had the summer sky in. So it's going to be a fusion of whatever color you're working with at the time, whatever value and the previous tone. Okay, so see that's a little bit darker right there than this area over here, right? It's going like this. It's kind of harder to tell where you've applied some of this ink right now because this tech, this background is so textured, but now you can kind of see these areas of light and dark, right? I mean, you know, it, this, this is like deep space that we're talking about now. You know, we're talking about looking up into a night sky and some of these things are, you know, whatever, a million miles away from us and other stars are five million, you know, miles from us, okay? So, you know, it's a, it's a different kind of distance, but the process is the same, or the same kind of theory in terms of, you know, retaining some areas of light. Here's light, light, light right here. Light, 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 you know what I mean? And it's just kind of deciding which areas you want it's not like following something like, okay, with this area, the cloud is a little bit darker, so I need to apply darker to that. This one, you're just kind of inventing it for yourself. What it might look like is something like this, okay? I'll just show you what it might look like if I was coloring on, uh, this is what it might look like over the top of the Milky Way image, okay? It might look like something like this, see, where you have these little varied areas like that. So in, in a sense, you're kind of making it up, but on the Milky Way, I do follow, you know, that larger open area a little bit more than the other spaces. But again, you can kind of go and fill them in. You don't have to just like stay away from it, okay? See, I'm going in and I'm bringing in some color into it, but just in general, it's the lighter area like that. But I did bring some color into it. I just won't bring in my darkest of colors into it, okay? All right, so let's go with a Danube blue, and we will use some of this Prussian blue here. It was the color that I stamped the imagery out in, okay? All right, 
see that area is kind of light like that. If I want to retain that, I'm just going to work around it like so. What do you guys think about the kitchen sponge? I'm trying to get a little bit more of a build up with this color right here. How's that looking? Is that looking a little more deeper space? Let's go with it on here. I can bring pink into this one too if I want to. I have this here. Maybe we'll maybe I'll I'll show you what that looks like. Looking like a pretty deep, rich night sky yet. Uh, let's be for fresh and blue is pretty, pretty, uh, dark here. Let me, uh, let's use some of this pink on here. This one's a uh, rose pink. That's a little bit of a lighter, warmer pink. This one's the, uh, the pink out of the pen. Let's just use the pink in the pen so you can see the difference here. Okay. So ink that up like so. That one might be a little bit too inky, so I'll just kind of wipe it off like that a little bit. And then we'll just apply some of this in like so. If you get some of this into an area that's just already white or re retains the white, then it'll look more pink. But when you put it over the blue, it'll look more violet, right? Let's go with a deeper violet over here by applying more of it, okay? So you can see you get some different variations in there like that. Isn't that fun? Doesn't that look real rich, you know, like a rendered space now as opposed to just a colored space, right? Rendering, you know, you're kind of utilizing light and shade to make it look more three-dimensional. I think this is already looking pretty three-dimensional. We're going to show you how to really bring in some three-dimension to it too um, after I get through this coloring here. So here's some of this pink being utilized on this one as well. Okay, let's go back to the sponge right here and go back to our Prussian blue. We're going back to it after our initial impressions with it. We haven't used it to tone in yet. This is a pretty dark one, so you're just going to apply this a little bit more sparingly. Use a lighter touch, you know, when you get into your darker tones, at least to get the feel of how that is looking. Look at that deep blue, violet like that, okay? Now, I'm not going to do that all over everything, okay? I'm just going to bring some in over here. And it's just to vary it again. It just depends on where I've kind of made things a little bit darker. If I were to do this piece like several more times, it would come out different looking every time just because of the variation and, you know, the fact that we're just kind of making things up as we go, okay? Like I said, like this type of patterning, you know what I mean? There's going to be some variation unless you're like mass producing something like a, you know, a bunch of Christmas cards and you're doing, you know, something very, very similar from one to the next and kind of a mass production style. Okay, let's take this one right here. Let's leave this one a little bit lighter in general. kind of hitting the uh, the corners a little bit more in certain areas where it gets a little bit darker I'll apply a little bit darker so, so you know so some of these stars are getting toned out a lot right well look at these two different versions right here okay this one I got a little bit heavier handed because of that initial use of the um the pink super juicy marker okay there's less definition in here but let's go in now and bring in a ton of depth into this scene, okay? Oh, by the way, I do have some of these pens here that we can use too, and we'll use those strategically. But one of the things that I really like doing on starry night skies or snowy skies, usually at night because you can see the uh, 
little spray pattern of these is some bleed proof white. Okay, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. It's pretty much available anywhere in the world because calligraphers use it and calligraphy is a pretty popular pastime. We probably don't know too many people who are calligraphers, but there's enough people in, you know, around the globe that are utilize this tone. There's other types of um, paints as well. If you can't find something like this, look at look for something like a like an opaque white watercolor paint. Okay, and uh, there's different brands. This has been kind of the industry standard for a long time, though. In the uh, in the art world, for both. Um, Calligraphers and illustrators tended to use this a lot. People who use things like gouache. Okay, so I'm putting this in a little area of the tip of my um, toothbrush here. Okay, now what we're going to do is, I think, bring a ton of depth into these scenes, okay? Or backgrounds, okay? I'm just doing a little bit of splatter painting like this. You don't want to over splatter paint <laughs> unless, I don't know, unless you want like a, a white out or something like that happening. See that right there? Didn't that give those pieces a ton of depth? Now, sometimes you can get, I'm getting a really good variation of kind of a larger splatter and these smaller ones, some of them are really tiny. One good thing about the bleed proof fight is even the tiniest of little splatters it's a completely opaque little dot. It might be a, a 32nd of a millimeter or something. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, inches, you know, I don't know, whatever. One one hundredth of a, an inch, you know, a little splatter down there and it's still very opaque. But one of the things that we went into with our acrylic paint pens on these scenes is we added some highlights on the tops of our trees to give it that more of that three-dimensional looking shimmer. We can go in with um, paint pens these days and there's all kinds of different colors. Um, I happen to have a set of the um, Artistro 42 paint pen sets. These are the extra fines here. And, I mean, use, just using white on here looks fantastic, too. But I like using colors within my color scheme. So we have blue tones. Let's just use the, uh, the lighter blue right here. And I can get some blue dots in here. This one's a little bit darker than I thought. <laughs> Maybe you just use... Uh, I mean, the, you know, a, a darker blue stands out in an area that, you know, is a lighter, a, a darker area in the background. So I can have this kind of blue stand out against this really dark violet right here. Okay. But let's go a little bit lighter. So see this right here? You can go with like lighter, lighter, lighter. This one has a little bit of a warmth to it, huh? Let's see how this one looks. See if it's a little bit lighter. Eh, eh, a little bit lighter. It's a little bit of a temperature change too, so it stands out a little bit. But I can go for a larger dot if I want to, just by kind of drawing it in. Oh, I mean, if you really want to push depth on this, you can, I love using, um, going down little crystals onto the uh, onto the uh, nighttime skies, you know, like put a little crystal here and there. You can do it in the form of your favorite constellation, in fact. Okay, so here's white. Now this is really going to stand out, right? See this right here? I can do variations in my size of dot. And what are we doing when we're doing this varying size? Now, to me, it just looks better in terms of variety. 
but these larger dots probably represent something. For the most part, it, in a scene like this, or in a background like this, it would represent a star that's closer to us. It's just we're getting more light, right? I mean, it could be a younger star that's brighter, but by and large, you know, if we're talking about millions of miles in between, like even these stars in here, it probably means something closer. So again, rendering represents, you know, kind of the illusion of depth and space and making things look more three-dimensional. In things like this, where a dot represents an entire, you know, whatever, sun or planet or something like that, um, we're talking about the distances. I'm not going to vary my tone within a dot or something like that, but That's what that represents. So we're talking about differences and, you know, it's like when you put a dot like that down, it's like I, I just created a million miles of space, you know, in that little section right there by putting in that large dot like that, okay? So you're the, uh, the mighty creator within your own card in many ways, right? Okay, so adding that down, I'm going to use a little bit of more of a variation in here. All right, so that is that. We have some good depth in here. There's some variation in contrast by putting a little white dot down in kind of that darker area. You know, we splatter painted in there. You know, it's just really fun stuff. Let's do something here. Um, let's go with, uh, let's see if I have my, where are my pine spruce tree? Let me see if I have a spruce tree around here. Let's take a look at this in terms of an application of a card, okay? So see, this gets pretty dark right here in this scene right here. Let's see which way looks up and which way looks down. Let's, we'll make this kind of up and down here. You can also stamp this way or this way. I think this looks pretty good like this, though. Let's go with the Versifying Claire here. Something really dark, right? And I'm going with a pretty bold image right here in the form of the spruce tree large. And let's make this into a little bit of a scene. It'll be a very simple scene. But when I'm doing this, what are we doing? We're really bringing in a lot of depth into this. Now we have something that's not only, you know, whatever, hundreds of thousands of miles away, but now we're bringing in some things that are... I don't know, whatever, 20 feet away from us or something like that. So you get the idea here, right? Now, working with, if you haven't done stamp skates before, working with sky figures like this, it doesn't mean you have to go with sky first and then trees in the foreground, okay? I could have stamped out a meadow or something like this and the Milky Way could have been stamped above it and then we go in and render accordingly. I'm just kind of keeping these sky things separate so you know, you can see the depth within just that area um, within a scene, okay? Very fun stuff, uh, nighttime uh, types of skies, or, you know, whatever, daytime types of scene. Okay, now this one right here, let's go with just a cloud, okay? I have a lot of different cloud images. This one happens to be called Cloud Space. It kind of represents... Uh, mm, I don't know, it could represent kind of like a alto cumulus sky or, you know, just, it, it, not really that too much, but it represents, um, I don't know, just a, a little bit of a, a variation within the daytime. It's like the negative space, you know, in between some clouds, like a close up of like a alto cumulus um, area. Okay, let's go with just some light tones or something like that. This one's a, a pretty good one in terms of, you know, if you want some variation in your sky, but you don't want it to be something so kind of dramatic as like a full moon or something like that, or, you know, a cloud with lightning or something like that. Just something varied, 
um, that's not going to draw too much attention to itself. It's there to kind of um, accompany, um, you know, whatever your main focal point is within a scene. Okay, so adding this down, I'm just, I'm going to be adding this down as if there were a horizon down here with some trees or whatever you want. There could be some, you know, mountains in the background. It's really whatever you want. Now this can look really ominous too. Like if I'm stamping this out in, you know, for a Halloween type of scene and I'm doing it in dark tones, I do it in black and I bring in gray tones and darker tones like that, it can look pretty ominous, but you know, you can make skies are, they have a lot of different personalities just depending on how you utilize them. All right, so that is that. Let's go in and bring in some tones into it. Now this one right here, I'm gonna leave kind of lighter so I'm not really filling in as much as I did with a nighttime type of sky that's going to be darker. You know, on this one again, I would use some darker blues or something like that to finish that one off. But I think I will just start off with this um, re-inker again, just because it makes things go so much faster, but I'll just put a little bit on there like that. All right, and Let's bring a little bit of variation into this. There's not supposed to be a super amount of uh, distance in between, but if we're talking about, you know, skies or something like that, it could be, you know, quite a bit of distance, 100 yards or whatever in between uh, some of these areas within the uh, clouds. This one right here, you're just kind of varying it. I mean, there are structures in here and you can kind of stay within those if you want to, like this but you don't have to, okay? It's just kind of laying down some streaks into there. It's just to kind of unify things a little bit, but see that? Just adding that down like that, you're creating this nice variation in here. And when you create variation in terms of different values, it means that light is hitting different areas in different ways. And when you have that type of variation like that, you're creating kind of a natural depth because if it were in the same area, you know, the lighting would be exactly the same. But with a little bit of variation, you can really vary things by quite a bit. And this is just one color like that. I mean, this is, you can just stop right there if you want to. Uh, we used a little bit of pink in that previous one. Let's, let's take a look at that. Let me see if I still have some pink on this. Eh, I don't think I do. Let's add a little bit more to this. Okay, let's bring some of this in like so. Colored pencils would work really good in here too. Now I'm using a very light touch because I don't want to get too much of a application of this because it is a completely different hue, okay? Oops, ooh, that got a little bit kind of crazy up there. <laughs> okay, I'm using a, like a, a very texturized kitchen sponge too, so. There's a lot of holes in it, all right. All right, let's go like that. Let's go back to this right here. That got a little bit crazy. Let's go and blend this in a little bit more, okay. This is the Bahama blue, so I'm going a little bit darker. We're staying with that progression, going from light to dark. Where I go over some of that pink, it looks more violet. All right. See that like that? See this right here? It has those textures in there, so I'm just kind of going right over that a little bit. But again, like in here, you don't have to go in there or anything like that. Uh, I just kind of stay a little bit more perimeter oriented for a lot of this. This stamped out in um, like a brown tone or something like this looks really fantastic with um, kind of sunset color schemes, yellows, oranges, reds. But then you put this over the top of it and it gives it a little bit more variation. You can kind of see how it's looking like that. Let 
maybe this is a little bit more kind of a uh, before uh, before the um, sunset or something like that. Maybe I'll show you that how that might look if it's getting kind of closer to sunset, you know, from a a blue sky or something like that. Maybe we'll transition this. I can't go with oranges and yellows in here anymore because I already have the blue. But let me show you what that might look like. Okay, see that like that. Yeah, let's get, let's blend that uh, pink in a little bit more. Okay. Uh, let me go. Let's just uh, let's switch that up. Get myself a clean applicator there. Which pink did I use before? I think I used that other pink. Okay, let's go in like this. This is either like right before the sunset or maybe this is twilight like this. See a little tinge in there like that? Vary it a little bit, kind of keep it a little bit streaky like that for some variation. Now I'm using a very dry uh, applicator at this point in time, kind of coming into these other areas like so. And again, I'm not pressing down on this. I'm just kind of touching it. All right, so you see those the different variations like that for a uh, kind of a varied tonal sky. Has anyone seen these types of colors uh, before in your Maybe twilight or sunrise sky, in fact. Oh, let's try something here. Let's try a sunrise sky. Oh, I see. I need my pale orange. I don't have a pale orange anymore um, from Marvy. Let's try the antique linen right here. Antique linen over that area down there. Eh, I don't know how it's going to look, but... Uh, yeah, we'll see. Now, see, I mean, would this night, this sky be kind of cool, you know, paired with something like that? Look at that, how that would look. I get, you can still, I've left that area up top so I can do that um, with this types of uh, imagery still. Let's take some of this antique linen. Okay. Antique linen is kind of a dull, warm tone, okay? When I say dull, I don't mean like poor quality area. It's supposed to look like an aged color, right? It's a distress ink. So it makes it a pretty good tone to add to areas that you just want a little bit of a warm glow to it, but you don't want a big commitment to a specific temperature or color. It makes for a really great base layer color. I can put some of it up in my sky. Again, it is so light to begin with. Um, you can really add it over a lot of different things. It's not turning my blue tone super green or anything like that. All right, that is that. And let's see. Let's see what this looks like with some trees, okay? Okay, I mean, now I'm not, I wouldn't think to do this in a normal scene, but I mean, you can go in and add, you know, a little bit of a, additions to some areas with colored pencils. Yeah, actually, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> I've never, I didn't use colored pencils a whole lot um, before, I don't know, like even like a year ago, I don't, I don't, I wasn't using those too much, but I started using, um, because I used a lot of, um, 
glossy card stocks over the years. I like um, the amount of saturation and ink retention on the surface and the just sheer amount of vibrancy from glossy card stock. You know, that's what they print book covers from or movie posters, you know, and what are those designed to do? They're designed to get attention, right? So kind of glossy just tends to inherently have a little bit more of an exciting type of surface, but on glossy card stocks, you can't utilize certain types of media like colored pencils very well, right? There's no tooth to it at all. So here's a little bit of that blue tone in there. Just kind of blending in. I'm just adding this into these areas like this and kind of transitioning it a little bit. But see this area right here, there's a lot of variation in here. We have these clouds here and it looks like a little bit more distance in the background as you move higher up in the composition. I'll show you, you know, let's just contrast it against some closer types of imagery. Uh, the Lakeside Cove, any kind of, you know, if you do the backgrounds first like this, any type of um, imagery that's kind of more solid and silhouette based, you can just stamp it right over the top of it. Like so, okay, going for a little bit of variation like that. You have some birds or something like that, you stamp it up in the sky, or a quote stamp, right? But doesn't that look, see that sky in there, doesn't it look like it's transitioning out there into the distance, that's your horizon down there. You see a little bit of warmth down there. So again, it's varied. See, it's darker in here. The imagery that itself is darker, okay? It creates kind of that variation within that space, but then you go in and you can enhance it. I mean, you don't have to. You can just, if you had like a white piece of paper and you just wanted to say, hey, I just want some variation in here. You can do that. You can even, you can ink this up and wipe off some of it so that it stamps out darker and lighter within the impression itself. And you can just stamp it in there and call it a day. You don't have to bring in all these other tones like that. But those other tones do bring in a little bit more richness. In this case, there's a little bit more warmth against cool and whatnot, but there's a decent amount of kind of visual space within this form now, just because I didn't color it in uniformly. All right, so let's take a look here and take a look and see um, some different types of uh, imagery and how it might look um, when approached from a rendering standpoint as opposed to just a coloring standpoint, okay? So, um, and we have two Milky Ways right here, of course, like that. All right, so a pretty deep amount of space within our sky imagery, right? Just from the use of varied tones. This one gets pretty dark right here. This one's probably a little bit of a better example of variation in here. See, there's light tones, uh, or white, light, medium areas. And eh, this area down here, you get too dark, but it was kind of dark in the impression. Same thing with moon right here. Let me change my exposure a little bit. Okay, but darker tones right in here, you can see there's variation within the clouds. So the clouds themselves have a decent amount of kind of personality to them and character, right? And then we have our transitioning background. There's my alarm, I need to take off, but we're done with this part two of our rendering series. Hope it comes in handy for you. And thanks so much for watching.